Hi everyone, welcome in. Thank you for joining me. My name is Marlene and I am with A Room to Bloom. So this morning I um, pulled a prayer card and um, I've been doing that and then going to the Bible and just kind of checking in with what is the message that is coming forth for today. And as I've been doing this, I've been learning more um, about the Bible. Um, and so it's, it's nice to bring these messages forward. Uh, for the collective. So everything is kind of unfolded because other things, of course, happened along this journey. So I want to bring this message forward and share it. So the card that I pulled, it says, in everything give thanks. And it's 1 Thessalians 518. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit ahead of that. And it is speaking about um, it says, Paul's final advice. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and they give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. And live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak and be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to good, do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. And this is the quote. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you, for you belong to Jesus Christ. It says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good and stay away from every kind of evil. So it is interesting, you know, when um, we do readings that are messages that will come out and it, this is, gets back to that, um, take what resonates with you, right? So hold on to what is good or that resonates with your soul, okay? Stay away from every kind of evil. So I'm gonna let that be because what happened is I, um, I just flipped back a couple of pages and to be honest with you, I can't remember if I, it happened before I found this page or if it was right after. Either way, um, let's see. Oh, I just put something in there. Okay, here it is. It says, um, this really caught my eye. I'm going to hold it up. It's a dress. And I have something like that hanging on my wall. And it says, clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And that's um, Colossians 3.12. And so, um, I want to read this part too. It says, this, this is um, Colossians 3, and it says, Living the new life. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immortality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. I'm sorry, an idolater. Worshipping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. But now is the time to get things when your life was, was still, I'm sorry, you used to do these things when your life was still part of the world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off of your old sinful nature, and it's all wicked deeds. 
put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and to become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric or uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderheartedness, mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and to always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all of its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Um, I remember as a kid we would go to... Um, Catholic Church and and um, I mean I was very little but I but I always remember that um, and we it you know the prayers would say thanks be to God right so giving thanks through Him to God the Father and when I read that it that just like kind of rang that bell again right brought back a memory um, but so um, I you know I had an experience um, recently where. I was tested yet again. I, I did better, right? But it, there's still this thing that comes up that, you know, you recognize your own challenges, but as long as you're mindful of them and you're working to work through them, right? Um, and it's so interesting because um, yesterday I'd gotten a message about setting boundaries, right? And so you can set your boundaries so high that do you ward everyone off in your life or do you allow others in who maybe have really challenged you in the past right and because you have had soul growth and maybe they have had soul growth it just depends right but if you always just say no I'm never gonna let anyone in how do you have soul growth right so we have to do things that challenge us to help us grow in the spirit right to learn in the spirit so um, what's interesting is it did get me thinking about realities and a situation that I was experiencing, right? And so um, so I opened this book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it is all small stuff by Richard Carlson, who is a PhD. I asked for a message today, right? But I opened one, and I, and I felt... Um, drawn to go to a second one and I was like yes there's the message I, I it was very clear to me now the number is 44 and um, that could represent um, protection um, interesting I just well okay I'll, I'll get back to that but anyway can 444 represents protection but what it says here is understand separate realities while you're on the subject of being interested in the way other people do things, let's take a moment to discuss separate realities. If you have traveled to foreign countries or seen depictions of them in movies, you are aware of vast differences among cultures. The principles of separate reality say that the difference, differences among individuals is every bit as vast. Just as we couldn't or wouldn't expect people in different cultures to see or do things as we would, this principle tells us that the individual differences in our ways of seeing the world prohibit this as well. It's not a matter of merely tolerating differences, but of truly understanding and honoring the fact that it literally can't be any other way. I've seen an understanding of the principle change of this principle change lives. It can virtually eliminate quarrels. 
when we expect to th see things differently, when we take it as a given that others will do things differently and react diff differently to the same stimuli, the compassion we have for ourselves and for others rises dramatically. The moment we expect otherwise, the potential for conflict exists right? Thinking that everyone will fit into our box, right? I encourage you to consider deeply and respect the fact that we are all very different. When you do, the love you feel for others, as well as the appreciation you have for your own uniqueness will increase, right? Um, let's see, there was one more that okay, so I'm going to let that be with that message. So it's about understanding what do they say like the only thing certain the only thing that changes is um, or certain is like change itself or something right um, there's always change energy is forever moving that means our thoughts the circumstances we're in whatever people we are around whatever that is but I want I wanted to go to one more book with this and it's called Only, Only Love Today by Rachel Macy Stafford. I asked for one more message and the one that came out is so beautiful. And what it says is, um, it speaks on gratitude, okay? It says, what is the most, I'm sorry, what is the most coveted gifts were, the, were ones that cost nothing but a little time and presence? It says people who like to help. My family had the opportunity to redecorate a dismal dark room at a local women's shelter. As my children cleaned, organized, and rearranged, I was struck by the number of residents who stopped to say thank you for being here. But there was one comment from a shelter residence that will undoubtedly stick with me forever. After watching the children fold baby clothes into tiny stacks, this woman said, you like to help people, don't you? I can tell. In a society where grand achievements and small waistlines are, comp are complemented on a daily basis, in a world where busy is a badge of honor and excess is the norm, in a time where electronic messages are chosen over face-to-face -face contact, this compliment got me thinking. What if emphasis was placed not only on the value of our home, but on the openness of our hands? What if the warmth of our smile was noticed over the whiteness of our teeth? What if the most coveted gifts were the ones that cost nothing but a little time and presence? Well, if, if the day we spent at the woman's shelter is any indication, this would mean less competition and more compassion, less greed and more gratitude, less putting each other down and more holding each other up. So today I will be looking, looking for those with warm smiles, helpful hands, and generous hearts. Today I will be looking for people who like to help. They may never make the cover of a magazine, but they may make the world a better place. I plan to tell them so. Says so today's reminder, this week I will designate a day for expressing love to special people outside our family's circle. Those who those whose helpful efforts often go unseen or unappreciated. I will prepare a small treat and add a kind note. I will hand it to them in this checkout line. I'll leave it in the mailbox or on the trash bin. I'll place it on their desks or give it to them in person. I will say I really appreciate you. It doesn't take much to make someone's day and it doesn't take much to create a sense of hope in the world. It doesn't take much to turn an average day into a memorable one. So beautiful, right? That's just such a beautiful message. I really, really like this part where she said, if, well, if this, well, if the day we spent at the woman's shelter is any indication, this would mean less competition more compassion, less greed, more gratitude, less putting each other down, more holding each other up. Very beautiful. So it really asks us to look at where are we in our life? Are we competing with others or are we being compassionate with others and with ourselves? right? 
are we being greedy greedy or are we giving gratitude and we you know it's it's a, just a matter of looking at where we are on that on that spectrum right um, less putting each other down and more holding each other up so really asking yourself are you getting caught in conversations that basically that's what they're designed to do is to take another down um, I know that um, I really worked you know um, in that area and yet you can still get caught in it because you you sense um, you might sense people's pain or maybe the way one person lives versus the way you live doesn't make sense right and so it might kind of bother you um, because you might feel it deeply right and um, sometimes when there's something more just doesn't make sense to us we want to push it away and not have that anywhere near us not in our energy um, and the best thing that someone thinks they can do is complain about it um, versus taking the time to maybe have a conversation with someone saying where is your where is your pain and um, you might not need to ask but if you don't know a person um, it doesn't take long to find out how a situation got to be the way it is right but you have to inquire you have to ask you can't assume that you know everything about someone's story especially if someone else is telling you what another person's story is but you have never experienced them you have never talked to them personally um, um, and so th that can be experienced I think in um, gang stalking um, where people are paid to follow people to harass people to they get gift cards they get all different kinds of financial perks right to um, push and test another and to get them off of their track to get them out of character oh and in the beginning um, there were many many times that that worked for me but I'm happy to say I've really over um, overcome that um, and yet the test will still come right if you if you don't do anything then you're not growing right and so again maybe you have your boundaries set so high that do you ever let them down and let someone in even someone who has greatly tested you before can you start to see things differently and instead of throwing up what you might have um, in the past judged someone right can we clothe ourselves with the tender-hearted mercy can we see someone else in their pain and why they might be doing that maybe they're having a hard time finding a job and someone comes along and says hey if you do this um, I'll give you this and they feel so desperate that they do it or they start believing or they start disliking someone because someone's telling them to dislike a person right um, again leaning into kindness humility gentleness and patience with another so today um, like I was tested right and it's like I recognized it as soon as I was like you know um, I, I just had to pull myself back but it didn't get like far away like it used to right it's like nope I feel the test I'm, I'm still growing right still healing through some of this but it is what it is but you have to recognize it in order to one see how far you maybe have come in a situation with your own soul's growth with your own healing with your own journey and then also looking at others um, journey right um, but our work is not necessarily we're, we're not here to fix others but we are here to help others right we are here to be tender-hearted we're to, were to be tender-hearted to have mercy and kindness humility and if this, these were things that you haven't been practicing maybe at certain times you've practiced them in your life or only with certain people but then something that comes into your boundaries right that's a bit uncomfortable what do we do we we throw up the walls right mm, 
no. Um, but but interestingly, <clears throat> oh, there was a video that just came on, and it was speaking about the need for protecting your energy. So many times in our human experience, we try to protect our boundaries because what we're really we we believe we're protecting our home, our um, you know whatever, all different types of things about ourselves. It could be our family. Um, we set up boundaries, we build fences, right? Um, but what if we started to dismantle that a bit? And now we start looking at things from an energetic perspective, instead of so much on the 3D with the fence and the this, now we learn how to protect our energy from a spiritual, a spiritual, um, aspect, right? So then it's just taking a look at how do we do that? Well, there are multiple ways that you can do that. But one is really self-recognizing when you are tired, when you are exhausted. Um, recognizing when is that coming up? What's going on in your life? Is it literally because you have been running physically hard? Or have you um, noticed that you just don't have a lot of energy but you have not been physically exerting yourself, right? So there could be other things that are going on with that on an energetic basis. So just something to keep in mind, um, but you're still being encouraged to honor the energy, honor your own energy, right? And to still work through this, right? To, to live in this space without living behind the wall of the ego, um, living in fear, right? So there, there's a lot to this, but I thought it was really a beautiful message. But I'm going to keep this kind of simple and short today. I want to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope this message was helpful for you on your journey, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.